a swarm of nearly 700 small earthquakes, most in the 2.0 to 3.0 range, rattled the Mojave Desert between June and September. The little shakers, as geologists began referring to them, were centered mainly in and around the area of Joshua Tree National Park, about 130 miles to the southeast of Los Angeles. There were few injuries, all minor, and the only reported fatality happened when a 26-year-old rock climber named Eric Camo bivouacked for the night a few hundred feet up the face of a granite formation known as G-String, fell out of his mummy bag. There was, however, some question as to whether it was one of the tiny quakes that caused Camo's fall, or the handful of granddaddy purple gummies he'd ingested a few hours earlier, the residual amount of cannabis in his system being well over the 1.5 number that ultimately pinged the Richter scale. The explanation for the sudden seismic frenzy was sourced to the long California drought, by then in its sixth year. Groundwater, having seeped deeper and deeper into the parched and panting earth, was steadily building up pressure, while at the same time lubricating the myriad underground plates that made up the Pinto Mountain Fault, thereby making it a lot easier for the ground to move. And move, it did. By the first week of September, the Pinto Mountain quakes had grown stronger. Eventually, one of them tipped the Ricky at 4.2, and gave a hard shove to the bigger Rialto Colton fault in Riverside, provoking a 5.0 roller that did little more than set off car alarms, knock a few soccer trophies off shelves, and, most damagingly, send shards of broken glass into the salad bar at an olive garden in San Dimas. Less than 24 hours later, the still settling fault under the Rialto Colton basin gave what amounted to a gentle pat on the back to a northward section of the much larger San Andreas fault, which, in turn, delivered a more vigorous jolt to the Hollywood Fault to the west. These last two handoffs were made possible by a grant from ExxonMobil, whose extensive fracking around the Los Angeles basin allowed for what might have remained a local event to now expand some 50 miles through newly created fractures in the bedrock. So it was on September 2nd, at four minutes after 10 p.m., a shaker with what would later be determined as a moment magnitude of 7.1, a modified Mercalli intensity of 9, violent, and ground accelerations that went a full 2 Gs, grabbed the city of Los Angeles by the throat and throttled it like a wolf on a weasel for a full 22 seconds. The worst damage was in Hollywood, where portions of over a dozen large structures, including the Chinese Theater and the Roosevelt Hotel, collapsed. A mile-long stretch of Sunset Boulevard kicked up and started rolling along in a two-foot wave of twisting asphalt that knocked Priuses onto sidewalks and ruptured water and gas mains, creating the unusual circumstance of fires and floods at the same time. A mixed-use development, including two residential high-rises still under construction at the corner of Argyle Avenue and Yucca Street, suffered major fire damage when a sinkhole some 80 feet in diameter opened up between the structures causing a gas explosion so big it could be seen from downtown. A dozen more sinkholes, one over a city block long, opened up all along Hollywood Boulevard. The parking garage below a new condominium building on Western Avenue collapsed into yet another crater, taking four of the twelve units with it. Inside the body shop, a strip club on Sunset, performers and patrons alike found themselves inside a warping and rippling house of mirrors before the lights went out, and the panicked horde began crashing into the glass, and each other, in an effort to get the fuck out. A bouncer and several dancers made it to the street, the latter clad only in the velvet curtains they managed to yank down in the midst of their escape. In Griffith Park, to the east, eighty-foot-tall pines were cracked like bullwhips, snapping off at the top and leaving the ground throughout the park strewn with what looked like miniature Christmas trees.